So now start with a regeneration cycle, means Rankine cycle with regeneration. So here I will mention that regeneration uh, we are using in case of Rankine cycle to increase the efficiency of the cycle. So now let's talk about Rankine cycle with regeneration. So we will discuss about Rankine cycle with regeneration. With re generation. So first of all I will write the purpose of this regeneration and what is the meaning of regeneration. So uh, first of all I will write the purpose of regeneration. Regeneration. So as I already uh, uh, earlier told to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle we have to use regeneration. So we can write to increase to increase the efficiency of the efficiency of the plant of the plant or we can say that of the Rankine cycle Rankine cycle by increasing by increasing increasing the mean temperature of Using the mean temperature of mean temperature of heat addition, heat addition. So now I will uh, talk about what is the basically meaning of the regeneration. So now let's talk about regeneration. So in regeneration, the some amount of steam is extracted from the turbine and is used to increase the temperature of feed water. Means uh, before entering into the boiler, the temperature of the water will increase so that in boiler, the heat supplied in the boiler will be less. So that's why the mean temperature of heat addition will be more and the efficiency will be more. So now regeneration is some amount of some amount of steam is steam is extracted extracted from the turbine extracted from the turbine and is and is used to increase and is used to increase the temperature of feed water the temperature Temperature of feed water. Feed water. This process is called pleading. This process is called pleading. Now let's take a regenerative cycle, a flow diagram with two feed water heaters. So now I am taking regenerative cycle regenerative cycle with two feed water heater two feed water heaters regenerative cycle with two feed water heaters. So let's uh, draw the diagram here. Here I am having the boiler where I am supplying the heat Q1. Now suppose 1 kg of the steam is passing through here and it is going into the turbine. This one is the turbine diagram and at two points we are extracted the M1 kg and now it is going into this feed water heater. This feed water heater. Similarly, at again at three point, we are extracting some heat 
and it is again going to some feed water heater at the time we are having m2 kg and now at 4 point it is 4 because we are already extracting m1 and m2 kg of steam from 1 kg so remaining will go into the condenser so 1 minus m1 minus m2 kg will go into the condenser it is going into the condenser and here we are having the heat rejection of Chu2 and now it is leaving at 5 means here to condenser there will be water at point 5 so here I am mentioning this was 1 point 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and through pump we will send this water into this feed water heater so here I am having pump that is suppose first pump and work done will be WP1 so this one is pump 1 so now this water is going into the feed water heater 2 that is heater 2 and this one is heater 1 and now this steam that is 3 it is coming from here it is entering into the heater 2 and the water which is coming from pump 1 it is entering here that is suppose 6 and now the water which is having high temperature will be slaving at state 7 and it will passing through a second pump and work done for second pump work done on pump that is W2 WP2 that is pump 2 so now this water is again entering into the heater 1 at state 8 and then the steam coming from this 2 point will meet it here at heater 1 and now the water will leave at state 9 and this water is pumped through this pump 3 that is work done is WP3 pump 3 and this water will be entered into the boiler at stage 10 so this one is the correct representation of regenerative cycle with two feed water heater so basically what we are doing here we are extracting the steam from this turbine at point 2 and 3 and we are uh, supplying this steam to this feed water heater and here from this condenser whatever the water is coming we are uh, supplying to this heater and by this heating arrangement due to the steam extracted from turbine it will have higher temperature at 7 similarly this is going again in again the another feed water heater and the steam is coming from 2 again this the water will uh, heat it and it is leaving at 9 and through this pump we can supply to the uh, boiler at step 10 so that is a typical regenerative cycle with 2 feed water heater so remember one thing we are expecting m1 and m2 kilogram of steam here and only the 1 minus m1 minus or 1 minus m1 minus m2 kg of steam is doing work so this is a typical uh, diagram for regenerative cycle now I will uh, show the whole regenerative process on the TS plot. So now let's talk about regenerative cycle, regenerative cycle on TS plot, on TS plot with decreasing mass of fluid, with decreasing mass of fluid, mass of fluid. So that is very important. So now let's talk about this thing. So now I am drawing the TS diagram here. So this one is a typical TS diagram. TS diagram. So now I will draw the whole process 
on this TS diagram. Let's start with the point 1 that is saturated vapor and suppose from 1 to 2 we are I am, I am uh, no, okay 1 to 2 we are expanding in the turbine and during this first expansion we are having 1 kg of steam and now we are uh, we are extracting m1 kg of steam and it is used for feed water heater so here we are supplying the m1 kg of steam now from 1 to 2 we are having 1 minus m1 kg 1 minus m1 kg from uh, 2 to 3 we are having 1 minus m kg m1 kg so this work done from 2 to 3 is done by 1 minus m1 kg and at the 3 point we are extracting m2 amount of steam m2 kg of steam here so these are the uh, pressure lines I am showing here these are the pressure lines now from 3 to 4 again we are expanding in the turbine and here the expansion with 1 minus m1 minus m2 kg of steam and now we are having the point 4 that is point 4 and from here we are supplying uh, now here we are doing work from 3 to 4 and this the remaining steam is passing through the condenser that is 1 minus m1 minus m2 kg now after coming out from the condenser it will be at stage 5 as shown in our previous figure from 5 to 6 there will be a pump work 5 to 6 there will be a pump work and then it is meeting with the m2 here similarly we are now having the point 7 from 7 to 8 again there is a pump work and now it will meet at point 9 and similarly from 9 to 10 again there is a pump work and then it is going for the point 1 so this one is a typical regenerative cycle on TS plot. So here if you see these are the turbine work done from 1 to 2 we are having turbine work done but 1 kg from 2 to 3 it is from 1 minus 1 minus m1 kg from 3 to 4 that is 1 minus m1 minus m2 kg and this stages is the, if you see that this m1 and m2 these are the extraction of steam from the turbine uh, for feed water heater. So if you see the here the mass of the steam is decreasing from if you go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3 or 3 to 4. It's nothing but a turbine work. So if mass of the steam is decreasing then there will be a loss of work. But if you see here we are uh, supplying heat from point 10 to 1 only. If suppose we will talk about a conventional cycle then we have to supply heat from 6 to 1. So that's why we are supplying the less heat. So by this way the mean temperature of heat addition will be more. So efficiency will be more. So now we are going to conclude the things and before going to the conclusion I will write the uh, balance equation for the heater 1 and heater 2. Suppose I am writing the balance equation for heater 1. So the energy energy balance for heater 2 heater 2 gives in case of heater 2 we are having m1 and we are having 1 minus m1 kg means we have to consider the state 2 we have to consider the state 8 so what is happening in this uh, heater uh, we are having the steam at point 2 which is uh, going into the heater 2 and here we are having uh, 
water at point eight. So here, this water it is nothing but one minus m one kg of water is meeting with the steam, and we are getting the water here at point nine. So I can write this equation: H two is steam. It is m one, m one H two plus one minus m two uh, m one kg of water. At the enthalpy of H at equals to we are getting H nine. That is nothing but if we mix it, then we will get one kg. So one kg. So this one is the energy balance for heater two. Similarly, we can get the energy balance, the energy balance for heater one. Heater one. So the energy balance for heater one here I have to consider uh, the steam at point three here. So at point three, if you see the steam that is going at M two. Similarly, before in heater two we are seeing M one. So now here it is M two. So I can write M two H three. Plus now, if you see, this steam is going into the feed water heater, and this water here from six is heated by this steam. So this water is having the mass of one minus m one minus m two. First, I will write the mass one minus m one minus m two, and the enthalpy here at at six. Both will meet. And we will get the state seven. State seven is nothing but because M two is meeting here one minus M one minus M two is meeting here, so the total mass will be one minus M one. So I can write one minus M one into H seven. So these two are the energy balance equation for heater two and for heater one. So these things are very very important in regenerative cycles, and sometimes they can us Question based on this equation. Now I will summarize the effect of regeneration. So now I am summarizing the effects of regeneration. Regeneration. So the effect of regeneration here first definitely the efficiency increases. Efficiency. Increases, and the second part work output decreases. Work output decreases. So these two points are very important regarding regeneration because regeneration will increase efficiency, but the output will decrease because uh, we are taking. A some mass of steam away from the turbine, so definitely the uh, work will decrease. Now let's talk about the Breton cycle. So now we will discuss about Breton cycle, and we will see the efficiency and the other related important facts regarding Breton cycle. So Breton cycle is nothing but Ideal gas turbine cycle. So I can write ideal gas turbine cycle. Gas turbine cycle is Breton cycle. Breton cycle. So first of all, I am just drawing the block diagram for this Breton cycle. So in Breton cycle, we are having compressor. On which we have to do work. That is compressor. Compressor. So here the steam is or gas is entering at one and is leaving at two. Here in two to three we are having a combustion chamber which we can call heat exchanger here. We are supplying the heat Q1. And it is coming out with three. And at point three, we are supplying this thing into the turbine. 
so we are getting the work output that is wt turbine work that is called turbine and now from 4 we are supplying this thing into the condenser supplying this thing into the condenser so here we are getting the dejection Q so here we are having two heat exchanger exchanger this one and this one and if you see here the phase of the substance is not changing means we are in a, a superheated stage so now if I plot the PV or TS diagram we will not see any dome kind of structure because we are away from this uh, two phases and because we are in superheated stage so now let's draw the PV diagram so now I am drawing the PV diagram for this that is PV diagram here we are having isentropic compression that is from 1 to 2 so we are having isentropic compression 1 to 2 2 to 3 if you see here 2 to 3 it is nothing but constant pressure heat addition so 2 to 3 constant pressure heat addition now if you let's see here 3 to this stage is suppose 4 so 3 to 4 it's nothing but a isentropic expansion so we are having here 3 to 4 that is isentropic expansion and if you see from 4 to 1 that is in condenser means that is heat rejection so constant pressure cooling that is from 4 to 1 so it's a general representation of breakdown cycle on V diagram so let's talk about this cycle that is breakdown cycle on TS diagram so now I am uh, drawing the constant pressure lines first so this one is the constant pressure line and we know 1 to 2 is isentropic expansion constant enthalpy 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 is nothing but constant temperature heat addition is 2 to 3 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion so this one is isentropic expansion and 4 to 1 is nothing but constant pressure cooling so now here we are having Q1 that is heat rejection here pump over and this one is turbine work so now we are having uh, all these things Q1, Q2, WP and WT Now I will write some of the mathematical formula that is very important in calculating uh, the numerical problems. So heat supplied, heat supplied that is nothing but constant pressure heat addition that is Q1. So I can write MCP and in temperature is varying from 2 to 3. So T3 minus T2. Similarly, heat rejected, heat rejected, that is nothing but Q2, that is constant pressure heat rejection. So again, MCP. And if you see here, heat rejection process from 4 to 1. In that case, from 4 to 1. Here also you can say it is 4 to 1. So we are having T4 minus T1. That is heat rejection. MCP T4 minus T1. So now uh, you uh, we have already know this thing. The efficiency we can uh, calculate by Q1 minus Q2 by Q1. So the efficiency we know it is general formula for efficiency 1 minus Q2 by Q1. And if we simplify this, then for Breton cycle, for Breton cycle we will get 1 minus 1 by Rk comma minus 1. Here Rk is nothing but compression ratio. So I will write Rk is nothing but compression ratio. So the compression ratio is nothing but V1 by V2. It's V1 by V2. The compression ratio here is 
v1 by v2 so by this way we can calculate the uh, efficiency it is 1 minus 1 upon rk to the power gamma minus 1 similarly on the basis of pressure ratio that is nothing but p2 by p1 so i will write another formula that is on the basis of pressure ratio rp equals to pressure ratio so pressure ratio is nothing but p2 by p1 then if you calculate efficiency of breton cycle then i will get 1 minus 1 upon rp to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma so now we are having two formulas in terms of compression ratio that is 1 minus 1 upon rp to the power gamma minus 1 but in terms of pressure ratio we are having 1 minus 1 upon rp to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma Now we will see the effect of pressure ratio on Breton cycle efficiency. Now we will discuss the effect of pressure ratio, pressure ratio on Breton cycle efficiency. Breton cycle efficiency. So now let's start with the efficiency formula that is eta equals to 1 minus 1 upon rp to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So if more the pressure ratio, if more the pressure ratio, more the pressure ratio, more will be the efficiency, more will be the efficiency. Efficiency. Now let's draw the diagram or uh, curve between efficiency and pressure ratio. So now I am drawing the curve for efficiency versus pressure ratio. Pressure ratio. So if you see here we are having this kind of curve. So here the pressure ratio is 1 and here we are having maximum efficiency. So that pressure ratio where we are having the maximum efficiency which is calling Rp max. Rp max. So here we are having the highest efficiency which is equivalent to Carnot cycle efficiency. So now I will uh, talk about this RP max, RP max corresponding to maximum efficiency. I will write this RP max corresponding to max efficiency. So this RP max will be equals to T max, T max by T mean that is maximum temperature divided by mini te minimum temperature to the power gamma upon gamma minus 1 and if we calculate the if we calculate the uh, work done for efficiency so here uh, we are interested in efficiency, so if we calculate the efficiency here in that case will be the Carnot cycle efficiency that is 1 minus T mean by T max. So these two formulas are very important if we are considering the effect of pressure ratio on weight on cycle efficiency that is Rp max plus to T max by T mean to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 and efficiency is 1 minus T mean by T max. Now we will consider the effect of pressure ratio on net output. So now we will discuss about effect of 
pressure ratio pressure ratio on net output net output so here first of all i will draw the curve from this curve it will be a very clear so here on y axis i am taking w net and here i am taking pressure ratio so here that is value 1 or here we are going like that and again we are coming here so this one is the max work so this value we are calling rp optimum and this one we already know rp max that is corresponding to maximum efficiency and this one is nothing but w net max so if you see uh, this curve so at rp max the net output is zero but at rp optimal it will be maximum so now i will write formula for rp optimal so rp optimal that is corresponding to corresponding to maximum work done maximum work so this rp optimum equals to t max by t mean t max by t mean to the power gamma by 2 gamma minus 1 i will again repeat this rp optimal is equals to t max by t mean to the power gamma by 2 gamma minus 1 So this one is the formula for RP optimal. So now I will tell what is the relationship between RP optimal and RP max. So here RP optimal will be equals to square root of RP max. Because here we are uh, seeing this one by two factor that is gives the square root of that. So RP optimal equals to under root of RP max. So now I will calculate the maximum work W net max that is corresponding to R P optimum. It will be C P bracket T max under root of T max minus under root of T mean whole square. So the W net max that is C P. bracket under root of t max minus under root of t mean square and in that case the cycle efficiency will be 1 minus under root of t mean by t max so i wrote all the formulas corresponding to maximum work done so the corresponding to maximum work the efficiency will be 1 minus under root of t mean by T max.